Hatred is a horrible thing. Love is a beautiful thing. Hatred is a horrible thing. And we have just been reminded, the world has just been reminded of how horrible a thing hatred is. For a man to travel for miles, to leave his town, to go to another town, to take out the lives of individuals whose only crime happens to be the color of their skin is to remind us of how horrible hatred is. And this is just the most recent thing that comes to mind as we look on this horrible thing called hatred. It's all, you, history is replete with it. The Lord Jesus Christ is an amazing person. The principles that he encourages us to live by are just so pretty. Interesting. And I believe, and I've seen it from personal experience, that the principles that Christ encourages us to live by are the best principles to live by. And so he tells us, do not hate love. It, it, it is so amazing, ladies and gentlemen, because as I'm watching the reports about these 10 persons who have been murdered and listen to their responses from their families, it, it's really heart-rending. But as I listen to the wife of one of the persons who was murdered saying that she has to forgive the murderer because if she does not forgive him, it is going to be eating at her. I'm thinking the principles that Christ teaches are amazing. And so the Lord tells us not to hate anyone. And I, I feel happy because as I think about my life, as I reflect, I cannot think of anybody that I hate. Thank you, Lord. But I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it is not easy. I do not spew hatred, and I will encourage everybody here, do not hate. But I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, I have to, I have to pray I have to seek divine assistance because when I look on a member of the governing body making a presentation to Jehovah's Witnesses, the temptation to hate is great. By the mercies of God, I have not given in to the te temptation. But I am discussing this matter because I can understand the rage that former Jehovah's Witnesses feel. As I listen to Jehovah's Witness, ex-Jehovah's Witness, after ex-Jehovah's Witness, speak about how these men have destroyed their lives. And as I witness this man in the very act, of destroying lives, lying to people, knowing that he is lying to people, it is hard 
not to hate him. I don't. And I'm happy to report that I do not. But I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses represent a great temptation. Months ago, I watched Mark Sanderson making a presentation in a monthly broadcast. I was about to do the video and I stopped. I just put it away and decided not to do it. Do you know why, ladies and gentlemen? Because my doctor, two of my six doctors, three of them actually, two naturopathic doctors and one medical doctor, told me, you have to ensure that you are not getting angry, that you are relaxed because this will affect your health. And I found myself getting angry at the thought of responding to Mark Sanderson. The kingdom began its heavenly rule right on time in 1914. And looking to the future, Jesus said that Jehovah has set the time, even the exact day and the hour for the end of this wicked system of things. Does the governing body know when Armageddon is going to come? Yes, we do. It's going to come right on time. We have full confidence in that, don't we? That Jehovah is going to bring about those earth-shaking events exactly on time. But there's something else that Jehovah has promised to provide at the proper time. Would you go in your Bibles? Let's look at Matthew chapter 24 and verse 45. Now here, Jesus posed this question. Who really is the faithful and discreet slave whom his master appointed over his domestics to give them their food at the proper time? Happy is that slave if his master on coming finds him doing so. Truly, I say to you, he will appoint him over all his belongings. There are many new Jehovah's Witnesses who are not aware of the false doctrines that were taught by the so-called appointed faithful and discreet slave in 1919. There are many Jehovah's Witnesses who do not know. But Mark Sanderson does. Well, what did Jesus say here? He said he would appoint a faithful and discreet slave who would provide the spiritual food. But there's another important detail there. Did you notice it? He added, at the proper time. Could this this? Gusting creature. Tell Jehovah's Witnesses when is a proper time to teach that millions no living will never die? Can Mark Sanderson tell Jehovah's Witnesses when it is the proper time to teach people that the world is going to end in 1925? When is the proper time, Mark Sanderson? To teach people crap about Abraham going to be resurrected. When is the proper time to build a house called Bethsarim to host Abraham and Isaac and Joseph and David and all the people mentioned at Hebrews 11? When is the proper time to teach people that the war in heaven was between the Pope? When, when is the proper time? Mark Sanderson, to preach all the rubbish that this organization taught in 1919. When is the proper time for you, Mark Sanderson, to come to Jehovah's Witnesses at the annual meeting in 2022 to point back to that time, claiming that Jesus appointed a faithful and discreet slave and now suggesting that you are that slave? 
When is the proper time to give people all that hogwash? When is the proper time to stand there knowing that you are lying through your teeth with this disgusting myth that you were appointed by Jesus in 1919. Mark Sanderson knows that he is lying. It's not that I wasn't in the truth at that time, it's just I wasn't in the world at that time. <laughs> Mark Sanderson knows all the crap that was taught by this appointed, faithful and discreet slave. Mark Sanderson knows that the slave was not faithful in providing proper food. Mark Sanderson knows that the slave served poison. He knows that they do not know teach today what they taught in 1919. But he dares to come with his, I am so disgusted by these people. That it is a great temptation to hate. And as I say this, I am thinking, ladies and gentlemen, about ex-Jehovah's Witnesses whose lives have been destroyed by these men and what they must be going through as they sit and watch this disgusting man with such smile on his face, this, this smirk smile on his face as he presents this God have mercy. Why are they so evil? Why are they doing this? Why is a man who, who would dare to talk about Christ and about Jehovah, why would a man who knows that he is not what he is purporting to be stand before people to perpetuate this lie? Is the, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the thirst for power so great to Mark Sanderson that his conscience cannot kick in to say, do not lie to people like this? There's a song that is sung in Christian churches. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you some other to win. Fight manfully onward, dark passions subdue. Look ever to Jesus, he will carry you through. Ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you. He will carry you through. The temptation to hate these men is great. But do not give in to it. By the mercies of God, I have not given in to it. Not easy. But let us endeavor, let's do our best to ensure that we do not hate. Because hatred is a horrible thing. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God. He hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.